when we find ourselves in great depression over the fact that it's Monday morning, we wonder, uh, have we grown up at all? And we are amazed that we can be still so influenced by a dark, glowering sky or by drizzling rain. And yet it is a fact, isn't it, that many of us are very depressed on Monday morning. It's slightly easier if the sun is shining, but it seems that the thought of the next four or five days of dreary labor overcome even the moderate, moderating effects of the sunshine, and we still feel ourselves overwhelmed with not just ennui, but uh, actual depression. And we don't understand why it's so. And of course we try to act against it, we try to overcome it. And many times we do manage to overcome it, but uh, often we are unable. And sometimes the overcoming is purely temporary, and of course we have to fight the same old battle seven days later. Why is that so? Well, it's because the way our personalities have operated now for years. Most of us have operated absolutely upside down. What we have uh, been discussing is the meaning of life, uh, why we're here and uh, what the point of it is. And we've been talking about that for seven or eight months now, and I do encourage you to send for the cassettes of the earlier broadcasts if you're interested in the intellectual analysis that uh, is necessitated by such a discussion. But we have reached the point in our discussion where we have come to the conclusion that we have been made by a personal being who is intelligent and uh, does want us uh, to be his friends. And that's why he created us, so that we would become like him. And to that end, he has given us the same capacities as he himself has. And we've been discussing the way the capacities that we have have been used and the way we have operated our own personalities. It might help you if you aren't in a car and if you're at home and you can draw on a page to take a page. And what we have done is we've drawn two lines on the page, dividing the page into three sections upper section, middle section, lower section. In the upper section, we've put the word body. In the lower section, we've put the word spirit. And in the middle section, we've put the word soul. And that seems to be the three levels of life that the creator of the world has given us in our personalities. The body, of course, is the physical level. Our body, our five senses, through which we perceive the world of things and circumstances and people. The middle level is the soul, coming from the Greek word psyche, which means psyche in English, or psychological. It's the emotions and the mind and the will that we possess. And the, and the spirit, of course, is the innermost part of us. It's the real you. It's you as you really are. Most of us, we've said, have uh, long ago lost the real you or the real me. Uh, the spirit has died years and years ago and is virtually unused in most of us. It has several functions of communion with the creator of the world and uh, intuition, knowing what he wants us to do, and con conscience, which actually urges us to act up to the best that we know. But apart from conscience, most of us have spirits that are fairly dead or somnolent at this time. And we operate purely on the level of the body and the soul. That is, the little eyes see Monday morning on the calendar, send a signal to the emotions that is Monday morning, be gloomy and sad. The emotions send a signal to the mind, uh, just grunt when the boss says good morning to you today because it's not a good morning, and the mind grunts. And so it's a vicious little circle between the eyes and the emotions and the mind. The will is hardly consulted at all and is given very little chance to do anything about the vicious circle of response, reflex, reaction that we have set up. That's what governs most of the things in our lives. It governs our desire for self-esteem or self-worth. Somebody smiles at us in the office. We see they approve of us sends a signal to the emotions you're approved of. The emotions feel happy and comfortable. They send a signal to the mind, smile back, and that's the way it goes. The opposite happens, of course, if they dare to frown at us. And so really, uh, we are not in charge of ourselves at all. We're just the manipulated 
uh, reflex reactions to our circumstances and the people that we meet day by day. Now, that was not how it was meant to be at all. And what we do try to do is we try to make up for the emptiness that comes from spirits that are virtually dead and from uh, identities that are absolutely unknown now. We try to make up for the dreadful insecurity that that brings us and the terrible sense of insignificance that that, that, that causes and the great sadness. We try to make that up by trying to get security and significance and happiness from the world of things and circumstances and people around us. But all the time, we're simply engaging in a physical soul exercise. We're just being driven by the demands of our body and the demands of our emotions. And that's virtually what we are. Most of us are simply little physical, emotional people. We're not in any sense in charge of our destinies or in charge of our lives. And you've probably sensed that yourself. You've sensed you're rather like a ping-pong ball that is batted back and forward across the table by a combination of your family needs, your own personal needs, and the needs of your business or your work. And you've often sensed, uh, I, I don't exist at all. I may, as well, I may as well just be a blob. I don't do anything. I don't initiate anything. Because most of us have spirits that are absolutely dead. Uh, we don't know who we are. We don't know who we were meant to be. We don't know why we're here. And what, of course, is needed is for the spirit to come alive. Because the spirit is meant to uh, direct our souls and direct our bodies. Uh, we're not meant to be body-dominated people, but spirit-dominated people. And you are actually meant to know why you're here. You're meant to know why the maker of the world put you here and what particular abilities he has given you and how you're to use them and what you're to do for him to develop his world according to his will. And of course, as you do that, there comes to you a tremendous sense of significance. Uh, you feel what uh, people like John Milton felt, that they were here for a certain purpose, that they had a real destiny. And suddenly... It, it begins to dawn on you that you have a destiny independent of the rest of us, that you have a reason for being here that is independent of your family, independent of your business, independent of what people think of you. You are put here by the maker of the world to do something that only you can do and actually to be something that only you can be. Only you can love him the way you can love him. Only... You can be loved by him the way he can love you. There's a unique relationship that is possible because you are unique, you know. Did you realize that? That there's nobody like you in the world, never has been, never will be. You're absolutely unique. There's no one that can do just what you can do in this world. Uh, don't get caught up with big things, you know. Don't say, oh, I I'm not made to be a great politician. No, it doesn't matter. Maybe you're meant to chop down trees. Maybe you're not meant to scrub floors. Maybe you're meant to type typewriters. But whatever you're meant to do, you will bring a little bit more of God's world into order under his will in a way that nobody else can. And that gives you a great sense of significance and value. Suddenly it doesn't matter who thinks nothing of you. As long as the maker of the world knows you and has numbered the hairs of your head, then there comes into your emotions, certainly, uh, a, a great sense of peace and quiet. But most of all, there comes into your will and uh, a great sense of what God wants you to do. Because when you sense God and you sense that he esteems you highly, then you begin to want to know what he wants you to do. And through communion in your spirit, you begin to sense what he wants you to do. And he begins to direct you the to the job that he has for you and to the work that he has planned for you. And he 
begins to guide your life day by day and guide even your responses to other people. And so through intuition, you know what to do. And then your conscience begins to constrain your will in the light of that. And your will directs your mind to think the appropriate thoughts. Your mind then governs your emotions, which are utterly dependent really on the thoughts that you think. And then both of them exercise that power on your body, which then does what you're supposed to do. And so your whole all personality becomes integrated through your relationship with the maker of the universe. And of course, you begin to fill the world with his love and order instead of empty it for your own sake. Let's talk a little more about how it works tomorrow. <laughs>